Tell me one good reason why I should try continuing to fight it What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So as you read from the title of this video, this is gonna be a new series. So I'm not sure about that since this is gonna be me sharing with you guys my experience with hardware or software problems with my PC. But I guess hopefully it doesn't become a series since I don't want to face another hardware problem like this. So I actually experienced this around the first week of November. So that is a desktop that turns on for a second and turns off immediately and stays off. I'm not sure about the title of this video but yeah. Now these troubleshoots apply for the problem I mentioned and also to PCs that just refuse to turn on. So I was able to put together several troubleshoots based on the experiences from different users of tech forums and articles that I attempted. But of course if you guys have any more tips or troubleshoots aside from the ones that I'm gonna mention then feel free to leave it down in the comments. Now just a warning before I begin, you are doing this at your own risk. So if you've never done any troubleshooting or you don't know much about computers in general, then I suggest getting your PC checked out at a repair shop or where you bought your PC to avoid further damage and you can potentially hurt yourself. So as you can see, I disassembled my PC for this video and let's get right into it. First are two safety precautions. Wear rubber gloves and make sure that your workspace is not metal, preferably a wooden or plastic table. Ideally, you might want to have some spare parts or components for this particular problem. A spare motherboard, power supply, graphics card, memory, and peripherals. Now after you're done with a specific troubleshoot, be sure to boot your PC 10 times to make sure that the troubleshoot you did actually fix the problem. And lastly, before attempting any of these, make sure that your power supply is disconnected from the outlet unless you have a death wish or something. And plug it in after each troubleshoot to test your PC. So moving on to the troubleshoots. Number one, it might be that your case power button shorted out. Now get a screwdriver or flathead to jumpstart your computer. As simple as searching for the two pins on your motherboard that is labeled PWRSW, PWR, or PW, located at the front panel section. Not to confuse it with the power LEDs which obviously has the word LED on it. Jumpstart the system by simply connecting the two pins using your screwdriver or flathead. Or just press the power button on your motherboard if it has one. Boot 10 times and if it fails to boot even once then move on to the other troubleshoots. Of course if this is your problem then you simply need to buy an external power switch. Number 2, check if the 20 or 24 pin power connector and 4 or 8 pin power connector to the motherboard is secured and not loose. Ideally, remove it and plug it in again. Boot 10 times. Number 3, it might be a problem with your memory. So if you have at least 2 RAM sticks installed, remove both of them and insert just one in the slot further away from the CPU. Do the same for the other RAM stick and if it fails to boot even once on one of them, check the other remaining troubleshoots before buying a new RAM stick. Number 4, an overheating processor might be the cause. First up, search the acceptable CPU temps for your processor but ideally not exceeding 90 degrees Celsius, regardless if you have a stock or custom cooler. If you're able to boot your computer, check the thermals if it's within the acceptable range by going into the BIOS or using programs like HW Monitor. Reapply thermal paste if you can't boot your computer then go into the BIOS and then load the default settings to remove any overclock, overvolting, or any changes you made in the BIOS settings. Boot 10 times. Number 5, it may be with the devices connected to your motherboard that may be shorting out causing your computer not to boot successfully. So remove every USB device, PCIe slot connections such as graphics cards, or any other expansion cards occupying the motherboard PCIe slots. Start by plugging in your mouse and keyboard. Boot 10 times and move on to the different devices that you normally plug into your motherboard one by one booting your computer 10 times after plugging one device until you find a culprit. Usually a USB hub is the cause of the problem but of course if that still isn't the problem then time to deal with electricity. So number 6, it may potentially be a power supply related problem. Now just something to take note before troubleshooting this. To power supplies with voltage switches which gives you the option to select between 110 or 115 voltage and 220 or 230 voltage it depends on where you live but here in the Philippines your power supply should be in the 220 or 230 option. Now moving on to the paper clip test to make sure that your power supply is actually working. Make sure to use a sleeve paper clip like this one and then remove remove the two ends exposing the metal parts. Again, make sure that your power supply is not connected to the outlet, okay? Then we're gonna be inserting the two ends to the 20 or 24 pin power connector. Now, if your power supply cables are the ketchup and mustard ones like mine, just look for the green and black cables. But if you have sleeve cables, just look for the number 15, 16, and 17 pins right here. Insert the two ends of the paper clip to either the number 15 and 16 or number 16 and 17 pins. Put it away from other components or metal parts. Make sure you're not touching it while attempting this. Plug in your power supply and turn it on. 
If your power supply is fanless or passively cooled, connect a case fan to the Molex connector. If the fan spin on both occasions, then it might be a problem with the voltage your power supply is delivering. Now, I don't have a power supply tester, but I'll just leave links in the description if you guys want to buy one. A power supply tester is a really helpful tool for PC builders or to those who do a lot of troubleshooting to check if the power supply is supplying the correct voltage to the motherboard. Now, I wasn't able to do this troubleshoot, but in the end, it was actually a problem with my motherboard, which we'll get to in a bit. Now, Regardless on what kind of power supply tester you have, there are four important measurements you need to look for. Positive 3.3, positive 5, positive 12, and negative 12. So if any of the readings don't check out on your power supply tester, then your power supply is bad and needs to be replaced. Test the other connectors once you've verified that the main connector is outputting power properly. Test each of the other connectors one by one, unplug and turn off the power supply between each test. Now if it is a problem with your power supply, then you most likely need to buy a new one even if it's still under warranty as repairing a power supply is not really ideal or if your consciousness allows it do an rma and ask for a replacement Number 7. Now thankfully I was able to finally resolve my problem with a new motherboard which is not cool but hey my problem was solved. First, do a visual check if your motherboard has a bent, bulging, leaking, or blown capacitors. And it's fairly easy to spot them. If that's the case then you most likely need to buy a new motherboard unless it's still under warranty. Second is to watch out for beep codes on your motherboard for various hardware problems or compatibility issues. Now this is a good time to check your motherboard manual for the different beep codes to specify which particular hardware in your system is causing the problem. And lastly, get your motherboard checked out for any connector that may have shorted out or a problem with the motherboard's VRMs. This was my problem by the way, my motherboard was 2 years old anyway so I just decided to buy a new one. And yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Again, if you guys have any additional tips or troubleshoots for this problem, then feel free to leave it in the comments. And of course, if you guys have any questions, just leave it in the comments also and I'll do my best to answer them. Leave a like, dislike if you feel like you have to. Maybe share this to someone who's having the same problem. And if this is your first time to the channel, then consider subscribing. As always, bookmark and use my Lazada affiliate link when buying at Lazada and donate to my Patreon to support the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter for updates and announcements. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.